Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. First of all, thank you for listening. It's a pleasure for me to be here uh, speaking to you. And thank you to the VCC team for this invitation. So, as Diego said, I'm coming from Portugal to present you the Fruit of Fire Co-op, which in English means um, ugly fruit. So, half of the food produced in the world today uh, goes to waste. Uh, what is wasted in developed countries alone could be enough to feed all the people that are starving in the world. And this waste has not only ethical but also environmental consequences since it involves the waste of resources used in the foods production, such as energy, soil, water and um, man work. So the reasons to this waste are numerous and they occur along all links of the food supply chain. You have intensive production models, you have inadequate uh, transportation conditions, uh, tight expiration dates, and promotions that encourage people to buy more than what they need. One other problem is the major distributor's preference for fruits and vegetables that are perfect in terms of size, color, and shape, which ultimately restricts the consumption of foods they meet uh, certain aesthetic uh, standards. Now, this demand results in a waste of about 30% of what's produced by farmers in Europe. The same way it will happen to some of us, being, so, being too short or too tall, if we were fruit, this, we wouldn't be fit for the market. Now, this is quite um, unsettling. Uh, so, Fruitifier uh, arises from the need to reverse this trend uh, as a way of channeling this part of the, pr of the production directly from the farmers to the consumer uh, who, don't, who does not judge the quality uh, by the appearance. At the time, the Gulbenkian Foundation uh, la was launching their contest called Ideas of Portuguese Origin. So that was for us the motivation necessary to transpose the idea of Fruit of Fire from the head to the paper. So basically what we did, step by step, was define a model of social organization and decide whether we're going to be a company or an association or a cooperative. And although everyone told us that it was obsolete, we chose the consumer's cooperative model because we recognized that this preference had been largely imposed by consumers that when went to supermarket, they only chose the beautiful fruit and the perfect and flawless fruits. Uh, so it was time for consumers to unite and say enough. We want these products back in the market. Uh, also, we didn't want people to look at Fruitifier just as a regular and cheaper store. We wanted people to really feel part of the project and feel committed to reduce food waste. So the consumer's cooperative model matched perfectly that, uh, that intention. Then we defined our business model uh, to assure the economic sustainability of Rutafaya, and that's how we got to our operating model, which basically consists in buying directly from the farmers uh, the fruits and vegetables that are big, small, or misshaped, and they, they cannot sell in the regular market, with those products, set boxes, and then sell them uh, directly to consumers. Moving on. Uh, our operating model was defined based on a lean uh, chain which, which doesn't waste any resources. So we only buy products that come from less than 70 kilometers away. So, um, and we only buy products that are local and seasonal. So this uh, saves a lot of transportation uh, impacts and assures the freshness of the products. We also have uh, developed um, an algorithm to optimize the transportation routes, also uh, saving up on the transportation costs. The purchase to the farmers and the sale to consumers is made on the same day. So you save uh, a lot of uh, storage costs. And again, you, you sell products that are really uh, fresh. 
and the selling of the boxes is made on fixed delivery points. So this saves, allows you to save up on the door-to-door -door, uh, delivery impacts. Also, the fruits and vegetables are put on um, wooden boxes that are used week after week, and every consumer has a cloth bag that they, they also use uh, week after week to take the, um, the products back home. Okay, so in, 2000, in June 2013, Fruta Faya won the second prize of this contest that we applied to, which still wasn't enough to cover the initial investment, so we ran a crowdfunding campaign and gathered the rest of the money that we needed. And after that, we set off to uh, gather basically the three key resources that we needed for the project, which were the farmers, the consumers, and a delivery point, which is a space granted by an already existent uh, association, which is where we set and sell the, the boxes, and thus bringing closer uh, consumers and farmers. Um, unlike we expected, the farmers were pretty suspicious about us. Initially, I, th I think they thought we were like food safety agents or just mad. And one of them even yelled at us while kicking us out of his farm. And he was like, I've been told for 40 years that this is garbage and now you city girls come here and you, you say that you want to buy these things from me? I was like, yeah. Yeah, basically, that's it. And on the other hand, also unlike expected, we had a thrilling uptake from consumers. Uh, we sent, uh, sent a simple email to our friends saying, asking who, who eats ugly fruit. And that email became viral, and in less than a week, we had gathered more than 100 people to, to consume our boxes, and that was pretty amazing. So. Fruitify was launched in November 2013 with 100 consumers, plus uh, another 100 in the waiting list, 10 farmers, one employee, the founder back then, and one delivery point, and saved back then 40, 400 kilos of waste um, every week. I brought a video to, so that you can visualize how a delivery day works. To the end, okay. So, given its uh, innovation, uh, from the beginning, Fruitify got a lot of media attention, and just months after it's been uh, launched, it had thousands of followers on, on our Facebook page and more than 100 um, articles about the, the co-op. But a few months after it uh, had been launched, there was only two of us working in, uh, in Fruta Faya, and neither our financial nor our human capital made justice to all this media coverage that we were getting. And at the same time that the, the New York Times was calling us the big challengers of the European rules and the pioneers on the fight against uh, food waste due to appearance, our only transportation uh, van burned to ashes on a Monday morning uh, on the way to the countryside. And in that moment, we were completely, uh, completely devastated. We doubted the project could go on because uh, the van was our only and indispensable tool to bring the products from the farms to the city. It had been our biggest investment and simply we didn't have any money to buy another one. So, but we decided to go on with our work. That day we borrowed the van from a friend who has a restaurant. We asked another friend to pick us up where we were, on the highway, by the side of a burned hill, and we went to the farms uh, just the same. We got to the delivery point that day with a two-hour delay, and had only 45 minutes to set 250 boxes, which was a process that usually took three hours. So this was an Olympic challenge. But when we got to the delivery point, the word had spread, and we had more people than ever to help us. And then we knew the project wasn't going to end. 
So we set those boxes, and by the time the consumers arrived, we had everything ready. And we were still desolated, of course, still with tears in our eyes. And they, as we were telling them uh, what had happened that day, um, one of them picks a decoration jar and puts it in our table, and then he pats our back and says, don't worry, this isn't going in, we're all going to help. And he starts putting money. And then all, every consumer started putting money. And within a month, we had gathered one-third of the money that we needed. Fruitafaya invested the rest. And we were able to buy another van, and this time bigger. I still get a little bit overwhelmed with this story. Um, because in this moment, it was proven that the... Um, the consumer cooperatives model that we had idealized was working, and that people really felt part of something, of a collective, and had shown their collective strength to overcome such a problem, a problem that seemed annihilating. So, yeah, that's a good story. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So, Frutifaya is financially self-sustainable. Um, this means that the money that we make from selling the boxes is enough to cover the, um, all the costs, meaning buying the fruits to the farmers, uh, cover the transportation costs, and pay the salaries for the, um, the people working in, in the cooperative. And being non-profit, it means that all the money that you make from all the po possible profit that you make uh, is to be reinvested in the growth of the project, and that's what we've been doing. We've, we know that there is waste due to appearance everywhere, so our mission has, to be, has been to replicate um, Frutofaya throughout Portugal, launching new delivery points and increasing our farmers' network and increasing the number of consumers and increasing the, the, the waste that we save. So nowadays, Frutifaya counts on more than 5,000 associated consumers, works with around 180 farmers, has a team of 11 people, working with 11 delivery points, and saves every week 15 tons of fruits and vegetables from being uh, thrown away. And up to this date, since he was since he started five years ago, we've saved more than 1,300 tons of uh, waste. So, yes, I brought um, an animation video uh, that we made to disseminate the project's message uh, internationally, and I would like to leave you with that. In Europe, around 30% of fruits and vegetables are wasted due to their appearance. How did this start? When consumers went to the supermarket, they preferred the most beautiful fruit because they thought it was better. Supermarkets realized that ugly fruit was not being sold and so they stopped buying it from farmers. But farmers cannot choose the shapes given by nature. Thus, around 70% of the production enters the market whereas the remaining 30% is discarded due to size, shape or color. But beauty does not equal quality. In Portugal, since 2013, Fruta Feia Consumers Co-op fights to solve this problem. It buys at a fair price directly from farmers the products that the market rejects and sells them to consumers in delivery points spread all over the country. Bringing closer farmers and consumers. Every week, in each delivery point, 300 consumers save more than a ton of fruits and vegetables from going to waste. Valuing the water, soil and energy used to grow them. If we stop choosing by appearance, we can return ugly fruit to the market. By changing consumption patterns, we can reduce food waste. This video was produced with the contribution of Life Program of European Union within Flow for Life project. Okay, so 
the other video that I was telling you about should be ready to play. Yeah. Yeah, not this one. Okay. So this is a typical the the liver day, in which we set off to the countryside in the morning. We go to the farms, and in the farms we buy the the fruits and the ugly fruits and vegetables. So we take these products back to the city, to our delivery points, and with the help of a team of volunteers, we set around 300 boxes. We have two types of boxes. The small box has three to four kilos and costs three and a half euros. And then we have the large box, which has seven to eight kilos and costs seven euros. Each associated consumer pays an annual fee of five euros and then the price of the box every time they can pick it up. Uh, nowadays it's easier for us to uh, find more farmers to work with. Actually, the, nowadays they come to, to look for us, not the other way around, because Fruitify represents an extra income. We are buying at a fair price what was previously considered waste. A fruta feia, desde que não seja o produto estragado, mesmo que seja mais feio, serve. Enquanto a partida se for para o mercado com, fruto, com um produto, normalmente a fruta feia fica e que serve para a fruta feia, não serve para o mercado. Nem é questão de lei, nem é questão de, de Estado, é questão da cabeça, da mentalidade das pessoas. Estas pequeninas são mais doces que estas ainda. Estas, vou, vou vendê-las no mercado. E estas guardo no frio para vocês. Eu gosto mais da pequenina, é mais doce. É mais doce a pequenina. Realmente é uma fruta ou um legume feio, mas tem toda a qualidade. Pronto, se hoje a gente vai pensar só que o que é grande e o que é bonito é que é bom, estamos enganados. Porque achei bastante importante, porque no fundo toda aquela fruta, eu já estou farto de dizer isto, mas não me canso, toda aquela fruta tem tanto sabor ou mais do que a fruta que é bonita, ou uhum. que está perfeita, e é um desperdício mesmo nós estarmos a mandar aqui para o lixo, com tantas pessoas que estão por aí que, que têm necessidade. Ok, thank you for listening. <risos> Sim, sí, eu acho que temos tempo, se si alguém tem alguma pergunta. Hello, thank you for coming. And I have a question, which is, uh, what are the biggest issues that you have encountered on setting up this project? Um, sometimes we've had a problem with delivery points, uh, like spaces, that associations that all of a sudden were forced to close, and then we had to find another space and in another room, and in between we lost some consumers. But there's one issue that we're facing now that's pretty interesting, as a matter of fact, which is um, the farmer's concept of what is ugly and what is uh, the difference between ugly fruits and rotten fruit and beautiful and pretty fruits and what they think is fit or not to be sold. Because this was a project that from the start was designed to help farmers, we thought to them was a pretty logical idea that they, they are the producers, they know that even though it's misshaped or just uncalibrated, that it's good quality. But you have, you have farmers who, just like you think that, and you have another group of farmers that have so interiorized the idea that the, the, fruit have, the fruits has to be perfect, that sometimes you find it hard for them for even be willing to sell it to you. Or, the other way around, when we get there and explain, you have to justify, you have to clearly uh, define 
that ugly fruit is not rotten fruits. So what we've been doing to overcome that, we've, we've um, developed this um, information leaflet and we've been working with regional uh, councils so that we can organize clarifying sessions directed at farmers. Yeah. Hello. Um, Where are you? Here. Oh, okay. <laughs> Congratulations for your project. And I would like to ask uh, how you can be sure that you could offer to all the people that is demanding your product? You mean the waiting list? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's hard. It, well, our principle has always been to take one step at a time. And there's a limit to, it, to each delivery point. And there's a reason why we have a maximum number of consumers so far and, there, and why there's a pretty long waiting list. But we have a limit of around 310 consumers by delivery point because the transportation van has a limit and also because there's a human limit. We could even assemble 400 or 500 boxes in one delivery point. But then your relationship to people would be completely different, would be just like a shop. Now you just pay, ask for the money of the box and, say, and don't even say hello. And we want to keep a close relationship with our consumers. I can say that I know most of them um, by name. And we get to know their lives, their problems. Eventually they'll tell you about their problems, but they get to know our lives. And it's, it, you really have this... Uh, cooperative uh, relationship and that we want, to we want to keep. And every time we launch a new delivery point, we optimize it and then, okay, let's uh, start thinking about launching a new, another one. So that's the limit. Also, we have uh, so many people in the waiting list, but they're spread all over the country. Uh, and Fruitify actually only makes sense in big cities, in larger cities. This is because this problem happens, well, the, this, the fact that people can go to the supermarket and only choose the beautiful fruit, this happens more in the urban areas because in, in the fields, in the countryside, people are already eating what nature gives them. So by experience, we know that if we launch a new delivery points in a, a rural area, it's not going to make that much sense. So, yeah, but one step at a time, basically. <laughs> ¿Alguna otra pregunta? No? Okay, thank you very much. Thank Mario. you so much. <laughs>